Hey everyone, welcome to my how to set up video series where I show you how to set up all of my favorite effects to use with Ableton or main stage in live performances. This video will be all about delay, which is something that I use often with my iwi, but also with sax and flute. To set up this effect, create an aux channel by clicking in the sends box of the audio or instrument track that you want to affect, and then selecting a random bus. This will create a new aux track that is labeled with a number. In my case, it's aux4. The next thing that you want to do is click in the audio effects box and then click on delay and then click on echo. This one is the simplest to use in my opinion and it sounds great. So the advantage to setting it up in an aux track as opposed to just slapping it on the instrument or audio channel strip is that if you have multiple patches you can send them all through the same aux track rather than setting up multiple delays. Not only is this less labor intensive in the long run, but it also is much more CPU efficient. So if I'm going to be using delay in a performance setting, there are two things that I absolutely need to be able to control. The first is the speed at which my playing will be echoed back to me, and the second is how many times it will be echoed back to me. As you can see on this plugin, the rate of our echo is being measured in subdivisions of the quarter note. That means that if we're playing with a live band, we need to be able to quickly tell Mainstage what tempo we're playing at so that we can decide how fast the delay will be. In order to do this, we need to set up a tap tempo function on one of our MIDI controllers. To do this, Select an on-screen control for a button or a drum pad, and then go to Actions, and then scroll down to Tap Tempo. Now you can just tap along with the beat of the music, and Mainstage will automatically figure out the tempo, and then you can figure out how fast you want your delay to be using this dial. Full disclosure though, that's actually not how I do it. I just set this dial at one quarter, and then instead of tapping along with the beat of the music, I just tap the subdivision that I want the delay to be. I find this much quicker and easier to do when I'm performing on stage, and it has the added advantage of not having to stare at the readout on my laptop. So now that we have the rate taken care of, there are still two things that we need to MIDI map. Since we're MIDI mapping something that is in an aux channel strip, all of these mappings will need to be done at the concert level, which means that we need to click on this folder at the top of our patch list before we start MIDI mapping. The first thing to MIDI map is the feedback dial, which will control how many times our signal is to be repeated. I have this MIDI mapped to a dial on my LPD-8. I find that around 25% is good for most situations that I want to use this in, so I'm going to put that as our saved value. The second thing is of course the on-off switch for the delay itself. I have this mapped to the B button on my Wii remote since it's easy to reach, but I also have it mapped to a drum pad on my LPD-8 just in case I want to trigger it easily while I'm playing the saxophone. That's pretty much it for this plugin, but there's one more type of delay that I want to talk about before I wrap up this video. So the delay that I just showed you works on the principle of echoing an audio signal. If you're using it with a soft synth, that means that the output from the soft synth is the signal that is getting repeated. But what if we repeated our signal before it even got to the soft synth? What I'm talking about is, of course, a MIDI repeater, which instead of repeating an audio signal, it repeats the MIDI note information. This sounds nothing at all like a traditional delay, but since it works on a similar principle, I decided to include it in this video. Here's a quick demo. I love this sound, and I think it sounds so beautifully chaotic and super trippy. You can find this plugin in MIDI effects, and to get the effect that you just heard, just turn the repeats all the way up to max. I have the on-off switch mapped to the A button on my Wii remote because it's easy to reach, and trust me, this is an effect that you're going to want to be able to turn off pretty easily. It can also be really fun to use this effect in a slightly less chaotic way. Here's the intro to a song I wrote during my undergrad. That's it for this tutorial video. Please leave a like if you found this to be helpful or interesting, and please subscribe if you want to learn how to set up more effects like this one in the future. Until next time.